In this video, I want to cover three separate topics. The first topic is, what is a test plan document? And we'll look at an example of one of those. What are test plans in Azure DevOps is our second topic. And the third topic is, how do we use uh, smart docs inside of an Azure DevOps project uh, to actually make your test plans more traceable? So those are our three topics, and let's get started. So the first topic is, what is a test plan document? So I've got a sample test plan document that I pulled up from the internet here, and you can see it here on my screen. It's just got a title page of a test plan, it's got a table of contents of what's included, and it's just got a lot of information about what the test plan is, who's involved, what is it covering, but it allows people to really understand from a contextual point of view what is going on with this test plan. All right. So that's the purpose of a test plan document. And these are fairly simple to create, and all you need to do is really add in all of those contextual elements and paragraphs and headings that you need in order to describe what's going on. Okay, So that's all a test plan document is, and the type of test plan document you create and the type of information you capture will vary from company to company and organization to organization. Um, so if this doesn't look exactly like the ones you're familiar with, this is just one example. All right, so we see a test plan and what it kind of looks like. But let's go ahead and talk about what test plans look like in Azure DevOps, just so we can contrast the two. So if we minimize this Word document, I'm already in my test plans in my Azure DevOps project, and I can build a new test plan just by going new test plan. I'll call this Dustin's uh, Great Test Plan. It's a really good name, and we'll create it. And now, not only did we create a test plan called Dustin's Great Test Plan, but we also have a test suite here that we're going to add all of our suites to, and it has the same name. And we'll see that in a few minutes. So a test plan in a document, like a test plan document, is just a, a bunch of context. But the test plan in Azure DevOps is not just uh, the test plan itself, but all of the suites that you're going to run and all of the test cases that live inside of those suites. So if you're doing something like requirements-based uh, testing, you can go ahead and you can actually create a requirement-based suite very easily. We can select a group of requirements that we want to uh, make test suites for. And it'll pull in all these requirements. And if they had test cases linked to them, those test cases would automatically be pulled in as well. Now, if there are no test cases, you can go ahead and add in a new test case. It's very simple. We can say new test case. And we can save and close it. And by adding that test case here in the requirements-based suite, it's automatically linked to that requirement. So that's a quick overview of Azure test plans, uh, but what does it do, right? So we know that the purpose of a test plan document is to give you context surrounding the test plan you're going to run. In Azure DevOps, a test plan is that thing that you run. So you make a test plan, make your test suites, you have your test cases in each of those suites, and once you assign this test suite or a group of test cases to an individual tester, they will then come in and run that test case, and they'll get the little runner pop up here for Azure DevOps, and they can go ahead and they can run the individual test steps. Obviously, I have none here, but if they reached a test step that needed to fail, they could go ahead and fail that test step and include screenshots and videos and recordings to show um, really exactly what happened that caused a failed test step. So here is where you would run all of your tests. Okay. But a lot of teams really want the ability to take this Azure DevOps test plan that they've ran and include it within a document. I've already got a document built that is the exact replica of the test plan sample you just saw in Microsoft Word. I've got my introductions, my objectives, team member scopes, um, all the way down to the milestones and deliverables. And if I turn on the document view, uh, you can actually see exactly how all of these pan out. So I've got all the context for my introduction, for my objectives, for the team members, uh, all the way down to the deliverables, right? And it's an exact reflection of that document you just saw. So all I've done here is I've used section work items, which are local to your document, to define exactly what it is I'm trying to capture about this test plan, right? So a section work item for introduction, objectives, team members, and again, none of these sections are gonna show up in your backlog. They're just local to your document. So we've got our document created. Now, you might be familiar with SmartDocs and know that before you create a SmartDoc, you need a meta template, which is going to define 
what shows up at each level of the document here in the drop downs, right? Yeah. So you, under a scope section, you could add in, you know, your test plan or requirement or risk. The simplest meta template to build for smart doc for test plans is one that looks exactly like this. All right, and I'll pause for a second here so you can see it. But really all this does is allow me to create sections inside of my document and at any time inside of the document, I could go ahead and break a section down into test plans, requirements, or risks. All right, and I find that incredibly helpful for building test plans uh, and we'll see that in a few minutes. So we know that we can build a smart doc that will hold all the information we want, but how do we connect in our actual test plan and test suite? Well, we might want to have a section here that actually is just called our test plan, test suite, and test case. Uh, so let's go ahead and add a section to the document. We'll add a section, it'll show up at the bottom. We'll call this test plan uh, or test work items even. That'll work too. And we can see that under this test work items, we could go ahead and add a test plan. We don't want to do that though. The only time Azure DevOps test plans recognizes a test plan is when you build it over in test plans. Okay, And we've already done that. We went to test plans and we built a new test plan and we built a bunch of test suites underneath of it. So how do we bring those into our document? Well, it's very simple. We know a test plan is allowed here and under a test plan, we can have a test suite and a test case. So all we really need to do is to be able to insert those work items we already have. So I've made a query. All right, I made a query and this query is called recent test plans and test suites. It gives me both the test plans and the test suites that were created today. All right, so this is a very powerful query and we're actually gonna use it over in Smart Docs. I'll go to insert, I'll go to select query, I'll go to shared queries, and I'll use my recent test plans and test suites query to find those test plans and test suites I wanna bring in. So we know that my test plan that I created was called Dustin's Great Test Plan. And as I said, when I was over there, it automatically created a test suite of the same name. We don't really need to worry about that test suite. Let's go ahead and move that test plan under this section. And then we'll grab the individual test suites that we made as well underneath of there and add them under here as well. So now we have our test plans and our individual test suites, and we can see exactly what was ran for these. Now, if we want to add in the uh, test cases for that, we'll have to build a query for those test cases and bring them in as well. This is a good place to note that in Azure DevOps, your test plans, test suites, and test cases do not get automatically linked together. But when you're dragging them into a document here, into a smart doc, this will automatically link your test plans to all of the test suites that are relevant for that test plan. So this is how you'll actually make your testing more traceable just by dragging the work items you've created into a document. All right. And again, this next step of this is actually to bring in the test cases for this as well. Uh, we could do that very easily. So we know that the ID is 2315, 2316, and 2317 for this test case. So we can go back over here. And we can just grab the IDs, 2315, 2316, and 2317. And we can actually grab those test cases, and we can drag them under the associated test suite. All right, so this is how you can add in all of those requirements into that same document that you're going to create, and as well as establish an explicit link between the test plan, its test suites, and between those test suites and their test cases, okay? So the next step is, okay, we built a test document. It has all of our outcomes and all the, the contextual items. It also includes our test plan and the actual requirements uh, involved in the testing. Now, what about this outcome section here at the top? Well, let's get out of insert and we'll talk about what this outcome section is for. So we know we have a test plan, test suite, and test case, right? And if I go into that test suite, I could go into these individual test, uh, uh, test cases. I could open them up and I could run them. So I could run them for a web application. And let's say I have these test steps. I could pass this one. I could pass this one. Maybe in my last test step, I fail it. And I add a new comment, all right? And maybe what I also do is I add a screenshot. So let's say I make a screenshot here and we attached it. Now you could do that if you have the extension. I don't have mine enabled, but then we can go ahead and save and close this, All right? So we can see that when running those three different uh, uh, steps for that individual test case, 
we were able to fail it because one of the tests failed. But if I open up that test case, we don't see any of the comments that we thought we would, right? We added a comment to step three, but it didn't show up here in the test case work item. Now that's because it's actually showing up in the test run we just did. So when you run a test case, you're gonna be able to see what occurred during that test run uh, inside of your runs tab. So we can go to this run here, we'll be able to go to our test results, and we'll be able to see, oh, this test case failed. Well, why? We can see the summary of why it failed. So it passed, passed, and then failed. And here was the comment that we could have added, right? But the problem is, is that this information here is not something that you can readily grab and put inside of a document. There's no exporting feature available to you here inside of your test run. So what do you do? Well, if we go back over to our test plan, we know that we ran this test suite. So what we can do is we can then either uh, right click this test suite and export it, or we can just export our entire test plan. All right, so we can export it, and we can go ahead and we can say, give me this selected suite and all of its children. We can say, give me links and attachments and any associated automations, and we can simply print this. All right, but instead of just printing it, we're actually going to save it as PDF, which is really simple. Just to choose your save as PDF option from your drop down in Chrome and hit save. So I'll go ahead and I'll save this uh, somewhere on my desktop here. And this is the kind of document you're gonna get in PDF format. So you run your test plan and then you'll have all of the linked test suites here. You'll be able to see, okay, for this individual test suite, there's three test cases. These are the three test cases. Um, and then we can see anything that they're linked to, right? We can see that this, uh, this test case is the link to these individual work items. All right. And we can also see that the latest test outcome was a fail. Now, if we click on this fail inside of that document, what we're going to get is we're going to get that test run that we visited earlier, right? So the idea is, is that while you're not able to actually grab all of this information, put it in a document, you can export your test plan, which will include all of the individual suites, cases, and runs for those individual test cases and you'll be able to include that document in your original test plan. How? Well, it's simple. We saved that test, uh, test plan that we exported. And if we go back to our smart doc, we can go into the outcomes, and we see I have a table here. Now I have a test date. I'm gonna put in today's date, which is 01-06-2020. And what we can do here is we can actually attach a PDF, and that PDF that we're gonna attach just by using the upload file is going to be that exported test plan. So now that I've attached that uh, Dustin's great test plan that we just created, we can save and close this outcome. And the good thing is if we turn on the document view now, we actually get that table that we saw inside of the outcomes. And if I go ahead and I click on that PDF for the test outcome that we just had, we're able to see everything that we need, right? So this means that we can actually connect our outcomes, which are shown inside of this document as failed, back to the test runs because you click on the failed result, go to the test run and see what's going on. All right, you'd be able to see any screenshots provided by this tester, any recordings that would all show up here as well. But you'd also be able to actually have your document created with all of the context surrounding your test plan as well. All right. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and export this, you could do so very easily. You could simply smart report this entire document, generate the report, and you could apply some smart report styling to make this look a little bit better. I can go ahead and do that now. We'll turn this into a smart docs form. And there we go. It looks a little bit better. We can go ahead then and save it as Word and hit OK. And our final result is going to be a test plan document. That is better than the original Word document we created. It actually has the test outcomes, and you can click on an individual uh, link here. So you can double click on it and open up that PDF so that you can see what's going on with your test plan, what were the outcomes on that given date. Uh, but you also have all of those contextual elements as well, right? So you have your introduction, you've got your scope, <clears throat> and this can all be on one page if you want it to. Uh, given the template I'm using right now, each section shows up on its own page.